our government, the government of people of India, what exactly is the GDP growth now? The impression that we get is that it is at its highest ever in history, that we are about to reach 5 trillion, 3 trillion, and we will be the number one in no time if we get elected. But sir, that is not a fact. I would like to place on record that the growth of GDP under the UPS tenure has been over 8%, 8.1%. And the growth of GDP under this government in the last nine years has been just 5.5% growth. That's not bad, but it's 5.5, and 5.5 is less than 8.1. Uh, this, uh, this year it may reach a very high level of 7.3, but it does not destroy the averages. We need to be clear about statistics instead of misleading the people. So the problem is, there is a feeling that everything began from 2014. And everything began from 2014, and before 2014 was an era of complete darkness. Complete darkness. The remaining previous six, seven years, nothing was done. Sir, as you know, as mature people, we just cannot go on quibbling these sentences. We have climbed up to the fourth floor, and now we are climbing up to the fifth. But we need to congratulate ourselves for coming up to the fourth floor in the first place before we talk about the fifth floor. Everything, I have mentioned GDP growth. And what is this 67 years thing? What is this 67 years that I keep hearing? 10 years of that 67 years were in the Janta period, uh, respected Sri Atul Bihari Bajpayee's period. So that is 20 years to the NDA government in some form or the other. So we have to get out of this before Modi and after Modi syndrome. Sir, I mentioned fiscal deficit. I mentioned DDP, and I'll touch upon fiscal deficit. This is an extremely worrisome trend. It's not in just 5.8%, as we mentioned. Government has done, improved it from 5.9 to 5.8. Admittedly, it is in terms of absolute money that stays on my taxi meter. I have to pay for it with borrowings. This is a government that lives on debt. It is like saying that somebody is wearing the neighbor's Banarasi sari, or somebody is wearing the neighbor's suit and claiming that they my kitna sundaru. This is not on because that is not yours, it is somebody else's. You have borrowed it. In 2019, it was heartening to see that the government made a pledge that we will keep fiscal deficit within 3% of GDP. That's a very hard thing step because 3% is difficult to keep, but this government made this pledge. Earlier governments have also made pledges, but that pledge has gone for a six, a complete six. In year, last year, it was 6.4, double of 3.3, 3%. This is accumulated debt, my family debt that I have to carry right now the total debt burden of India stands at 164 lakh crores. Domestic debt, I'm not even including foreign debt. 164 lakh crores, which means that her Hindustani ko ek lakh satra hajar rupya kar wapas dena hai. This government has, has, has put this burden on, this, on, on the people of India. You can reach a GDP of 55 trillion. We should reach a GDP of 5 trillion, but not at the cost of such heavy borrowing. Sir, you know what is the quantum of borrowing? The quantum of borrowing is exactly the size of the budget 10 years ago. 10 years ago, the size of the budget was this. Problem, sir, is that on, on taxation, on taxation because we are one of the lowest taxed countries. I'm not su suggesting that go on increasing tax on the common citizen. The common citizen is already burdened not only with taxation, but with GST. I'm talking of the exemptions given specifically to the corporate classes. My calculation, I submit to the two honorable MOSs here. I wish the FM was there. But two honorable MOSs here, my submission is that four lakh crores has been the notional loss. The word notional loss incidentally was coined by one of your favorite bureaucrats. Notional loss on account of that exemption. Sir, the Honorable MOS, 
the Honorable Minister has replied again and again in writing to my questions that 14.5 lakh crores, sir, 14.5 lakh crores, an unimaginable amount, unimaginable amount, the budget of five to seven states, 14.5 lakh crores has been destroyed, has been written off, and may come back in pinches, in inches, what we may come back in inches, what we lose by buys. 14.5 lakh crores in the first nine years, we are about to close the 10th, it will be at least 16 lakh crores. This 16 lakh crores is common, per, common, common money. One can say that there is always a loss when you lend money. Of course there is a loss. Businesses means there may be a loss. And the international standard here, what is called the percentage of gross non-performing asset, GNPA, the international standard is 1%. 1%. And there are <coughs> country after country that do less than 1%. Some countries go up to 1.5%, 1.8%. Baaf kar do, 1.7, maan lo. What is our, uh, what is our GNPA? What is our NPA? It went up to 11.5%. What I am trying to hint is that the huge amount of excess GNP is not what the babus and the bankers are telling the honorable minister that we need that to clean up our accounts. Yar, pehle to batao kisne dirty ke accounts? Kiske jeb mein paisa gaya? Kisne looted? Pehle to ye sawal ka jawab do before you say mujhe ghar saaf karne do, mujhe ghar saaf karne do. Ye is par jo lootera the, jo lootera hai, they are mostly abroad. They are mostly abroad. One Modi, sorry. Uh, Nirav Modi, I don't mean Bakki Modi, I mean Nirav Modi. But Nirav Modi is a good example of how you can loot the banks and go abroad. Choksi, Jatin Shah, I don't know how, they're all from the same place. But together, the total loss on account of fraud admitted by the ministry is running at 1.17 lakh crores. 1.17 lakh crores. My state's dues are 1.15 lakh crores and 1.17 lakh crores has been looted by them. Income tax show, results show that we common citizens have paid 76% higher in the last four years. 76% higher. And the corporates have paid 24% higher in the last four, four years. Just see the corporate bias of this government. Foreign direct investment, but I don't know because well, the foreign direct investment has come. Sir, for your kind information, foreign direct investment has fallen from 3.5% of GDP in 2007-8. 3.5% of GDP in 2007-8 to 1% of GDP now. These are hard realities that we need to consider. It's not a question of a blaming game. This country belongs to both of us. Remittances. We are surviving on remittances of Indian workers and Indian intellectuals abroad. It has reached about 125 billion, according to me. It may be higher. The ministers can clarify. Sir, our problem is our tax to GDP ratio is much too small for a good welfare state. A welfare state that looks after health, that looks after education, that looks after everything, needs a higher tax to GDP ratio. And that is something that can be easily, honestly administered on those who possess wealth and who appear every now and then in the Forbes magazine as the first richest man, the second richest man. And we can do it in a very legal manner through taxing the securitization. They pledge the market value, the market value of their shares for security against bank loan. Usi point per tax karo. There is nothing unequitable about it. I'm not much in favor of wealth tax. It's an aggressive tax. But you can always tax it at that point. The state are being continuously deprived and finance commissions have always given between 41 and 42 percent devolution to the state. Itna bade commission bata hai, kul mila ke wo 41 percent ya 42 percent yehi banegi. In this, this is becoming a source of fear, a source of terror. What we call fiscal terror has been unleashed on the state. Sir, I am mentioning a person in the house by name if you say permit, because he has made a statement. You to give, uh, okay, I, sir, I won't mention the name. Ah, please. I will mention that an official of the government 
of Niti Aayog has said in writing, and it is published everywhere, that against 42 percent devolution to the state in 2014, when this government came to power, he was asked to cut it down by 10 percent. By 10 percent, by a chief minister or prime minister. So this is something that we just can't believe. That the same person who fought for the state the moment he became PM said, Thus, this is the come karo, kato, kato, state with the madhya karo. Sir, our state is one of those that has been picked up for slaughter, picked up for terrorism, fiscal terrorism. Tamil Nadu is another, Kerala is another, Karnataka is another. Sir, it is a government of cut, cut, and cuts. Food subsidy has been cut by 3.3% this year. This year. Fertilizer has been cut by more than 10%. Fertilizer subsidy. Total cut this year. Please conclude. Between, sir, I'm concluding, is from 5.8 lakh crores to 5.8 lakh crores to 4.1 lakh crores. Education has been cut. Sir, health has been cut. Awas has been cut. Narega has been cut. Where are you spending the money? On capital investment. Capital investment for whom? The capitalist class Thank has you. been able to give only 10% of the GDP, capital formation, and you are spending money on them. Thank on you. every sector, there has been a cut. Sir, one thing I will sir. Agar, is that one second, sir. My Hindi is not so good. Ahankar. Ahankar has been three times. Satta, Vaibhav, and Vangsh. Satta, Vaibhav, and Vangsh. Don't believe it, so see. Ravan. Korov or Kuds. Thank you, sir.